Hey, what's up? If you've been here before, welcome back. And if you're new here, hi. <laughs> I'm Hannah and I'm a photographer and video creator located in Seattle, Washington. And I've gotten a lot of questions about my editing style. And it's something that I've kind of crafted over seven years, I think, of taking photos. And wow, what a journey it has been to get here where I am now in my editing style. And I finally feel like I like it a lot, like it's my own. I guess kind of my editing style, I gravitate towards a more filmic, documentary, cinematic look and feel. It's a lot of things all kind of rolled into one, but you get it. And so I wanted to share a little bit about that editing process and what it looks like in Adobe Lightroom Classic when I'm editing my photos. So the photo I decided to use in this tutorial is this one from Hawaii. And I felt like it was a good representation of all of the tones you kind of work with while you're out in nature and that's mostly the kind of photography that I do. So in this right hand portion of the photo we have the blues, in this lower portion we've got the more warm orange yellowy tones and same goes for over here but we've got that um, addition of the green tones. I'm gonna go ahead and crop it to a 16 by 9 frame, get myself a bit centered and having this tree kind of being in that right side of the frame. So it goes from being kind of busy over here, a bit quieter, and then you've got some negative space over here. So I like that crop. Let me just get myself a bit more center. And we're gonna go over here into the basic correction panel. So I'm not gonna touch this white balance at all. I'm gonna just jump down to exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, lights, and blacks. So I'm just gonna go in and just add my own kind of take on this. I shoot on the Sony a7R5 and they are known for their sharpness of their images. But sometimes I like to take away clarity. So I'm gonna drop that clarity down to kind of give that softer filmic look. And I'm also gonna drop that texture down a little bit. And this dehaze tool, I feel like is one of the tools that goes overlooked often. And as you can see, this really dramatic representation of dehazing all of those colors. And we're gonna bring it down and it adds that sort of soft glow to your image. You can kind of see it coming in from the highlights the most and then it kind of trickles off over here. So I'm gonna just pop that down to a more lifelike, surreal type of feeling. And I kind of like it there. I'm just gonna toggle these a little bit. Okay, um, we're gonna skip vibrance and saturation for now, but that will be one of those final tweaks that we apply. Next, we've got our tone curve. From left to right, we've got our shadows here, we've got our darks, we have our lights, and then we have our highlights. So the first thing I usually do is adjust these two points. And you might be asking, well, why are you using this tone curve if you can just make those adjustments in the basic adjustment panel? This adds a bit of more control and more finite detail to these tweaks in the shadows, darks, lights, highlights. So personally, I always lift these shadows up a bit to give them that more flattened filmic look. And then I'm gonna go ahead and drop the, the highlights down over here and we're gonna create a really gentle curve. As you can see, there's so much tweaking that goes into each individual photo, which is really why presets are not a one size fits all. You're always going to have to kind of adjust any preset you get, even if it's made by someone who shoots on the same camera as you. Here, you'll see that there is a tone curve for the red, green, and blue channels of your image as well. You're adding in colors, you're taking away colors, you're editing based on if you want a more cinematic look, if you want a more filmic look, if you want a more saturated look. I tend to like blues, greens, and yellows, and 
with my shadows and highlights kind of mix it up a bit but especially for this I'm going for that more greeny yellowy type of shadow so as a really dramatic representation <laughs> I'll go ahead and make a point here and just between the shadows and the darks so I'm gonna go ahead and lift it so as you can see as I'm lifting the this point it's adding a lot of red to my image and moving the point up adds that color to your image as you can see and I when I move it down it takes away that color and adds in a more cyan color so for brevity moving the point up adds that specific color to your image moving that point down removes it and adds the opposite color for these more filmic edits like I mentioned I really like that green and yellow so we're gonna go ahead and try and achieve that green and yellow look Okay, so as you can see, it takes a little bit of time to kind of get those in the exact place where you want, but I'll go ahead and toggle this on and off for you to see those adjustments we made with these RGB tone curves and the regular tone curve itself. So it just adds back in that contrast. It flattens those highlights and while still remaining true to those colors that I was talking about, the greens, the blues, the yellows and the shadows, I can't say it enough, I really do love creating a more surreal image, but keeping it lifelike at the same time. And I feel like these kinds of tone curves, I don't even know what you would call this. It's like almost like a very slight S curve. <laughs> and this here is more of like a, this is more like a, I don't know, boomerang U, whatever you wanna call it. So to recap, this really allows you to find finitely finitely adjust your image to get it into the mood and the place that you want it and reminder that these RGB channels also allow you to affect the overall look and feel of your image by increasing or decreasing the number of pixels per color that deserves its own entire tutorial so we'll just continue on next down here we have the color mixer so I like to open this color mixer up so we have all displayed in here you've got hue saturation and luminance so hue is the shade of that color and saturation is how much of that color and luminance is how bright that color is or how dark that color is I like to keep those tones a bit more neutral so and lifelike so I'm just gonna make some really finite adjustments here to hue and I like to change the hue first because then I can dial it back with the saturation and luminance but again you'll see me kind of toggle back and forth between um, all of these different panels we've got just to get the image in the right place We'll move down to luminance and to highlight here I will use the blue so 
to show you, bring it all the way down, and it really deepens the uh, brightness of the blue. So we obviously don't like that. Bring it all the way to the right. That is way too bright. You can see that it washes out that color entirely. So we're gonna bring that back down. I'm gonna bring it in the negative to kind of add that more dehazed look to the sky and really bring out that blue color. So I'll go ahead and go up and just desaturate those greens a little more. Again, you kind of just have to play with these based on what you're, what you're looking for, kind of how the changes affect one another. So I'll toggle between the edits as we have them so far. So to recap, we have the basic corrections, we have the tone curve, and now we have this HSL slider. So to toggle off, I'll do the backslash. So this is the before any edit that we made and this is where we stand currently with the image and to be honest I feel like it's looking good but I'm gonna leave the HSL slider and we're gonna move into the color grading so the color grading tool allows you to choose what colors show up in your highlights your shadows and your mid-tones so I'm on the shadow panel here and again I really like the yellow in my shadow so I'm gonna go ahead and pop this saturation up so that you can see just as a more dramatic effect to be really able to see how this tool works within Lightroom. And you're gonna see these colors start to change as we go around this color wheel. And the colors change based on the color that it's in. So this is a really shadowy image. So you're gonna start to see the colors show up in the shadows. So you're seeing the teals and cyans and blues now. We're gonna move into the purples oranges and we're kind of back to where we started so we're gonna go back to the beginning and I'm gonna add in yellow so get that to a good shade and then I'm gonna drop that saturation back down just so it's subtle we don't want to be too overpowering with this there's definitely a fine balance here and luminance again is gonna adjust that portion of your image that flattens it I'm gonna go ahead and just boost that luminance slightly. So now that I've gotten these shadows in the right place, I'll go ahead and toggle that on and off for you to see, and it is so subtle. You can see that there is no yellow there, and then the amount, if you look particularly here, it's so finite. It's just a tinge of yellow, and I really like that. I'm not gonna touch the mid-tones and highlights, but I might come back to that later after we've adjusted more colors. So I'm gonna go ahead and just skip down all of these other control panels, and I'm gonna go straight down to the grain. So grain is essential when we are talking film edits and when we're talking film photos in general. There is usually grain in every single film photo. I don't know if that's a fact, but Okay, so I'm gonna go and zoom in on this image so you can see. So there's absolutely no noise, no grain, nothing here. So I'm gonna go ahead and boost that up so you can see. That is a lot of grain and that is very rough. We're gonna pop that back down to a more reasonable 35. The size I like, but I am gonna just drop that a tinge to 20 and roughness is the roughness of the grain. So if you toggle it all the way to the left, you see that grain pretty much disappear. All the way to the right, that grain comes back. I'm gonna just keep that there, I think in the middle. Right there, I like that. It doesn't really take away from the image either. If anything, it kind of adds that more nostalgic feel, which I am always after. And that's pretty much it for grain. We'll scroll down to calibration. This is at the end of my uh, correction panel for Lightroom. And I keep it there because this balances the image. This is always my final edit that I make to any photo. And so basically every photo comes with its own color science and it's calibrated in a specific way based on that manufacturer's preference and prioritization of color. Using this tool alters that, if that makes 
any sense at all. So you've got your shadows, you've got your red primaries, you've got your green primaries, and your blue primaries. So we'll start in the shadows. So the shadows, you're just adding a tint. So you're either adding that purpley look, warmer feel, or you're taking that away and you're adding a cooler look. So I'm gonna just pop that up just a hair on the magenta purple side of things. Just a touch. And then we're gonna move into these red, green, and blue primary sliders. So each one has a hue and each one has a saturation. Maybe you're saying, why do you need to adjust hue when we just adjusted hue in the HSL slider tool? So every single pixel has every single one of these hues. These are the primary colors, red, green, and blue. So every single pixel in this image is going to be affected by these sliders and best represented when we bring it all the way to the left or all the way to the right you can see every single piece of this image is affected so it gives you a control over the entire image conversely when we're in the hsl panel you're only affecting that hue and hues that are similar to it within that same color family and if you've seen that popular orange and teal look to photos this is where they are achieving that okay so we're back here we're gonna just pop down this a uh, hair and this saturation is gonna show how much saturation you are going to get and how little saturation you're gonna get out of your image. And green, when you're adjusting it to the right, allows for more pastel play on colors. So I'm gonna keep it just about there. Okay, I'm finally liking this. So I have adjusted the shadows, the red primaries, the green primaries, and the blue primaries. And again, this panel affects every single pixel in your image because every single pixel is made up of red, green, and blue. I will toggle this on and off. So this is off and without that color calibration. And this is on and you can see the vibrancy and the way in which this photo comes to life when you put on this calibration. And I'll toggle between before and after. So this is before any sort of edits were made, aside from the crop of course, and this is after. And I am loving where we are at with this image so far. I'm gonna go up, I mentioned the saturation and the vibrance I was leaving until the very last thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop that vibrance of the image down. I'm also gonna pop the saturation down just a tinge because I do tend to like that quieter kind of tone. I'll toggle on and off again for you. This is before and this is the after of this image. So after all those edits, I really love where this image is at. It looks like a more filmic feel. It takes away some really deep contrast. It makes those highlights a little less harsh and adds green to the shadows and yellows to the shadows to really create that overall cinematic filmic look that I'm always after. So let me know if you like this, if you're into this sort of thing, if there's any other Lightroom tutorial that you want to see. I hope to break down these tools more in depth because this was really just an overview and I could talk for hours about each of these, but for brevity of this edit, I decided to keep it short. <laughs> So if you like this one, please hit the like button and leave a comment. Tell me how you edit your photos, what you do differently. I am always eager to learn. So thank you so much for watching. I will catch you guys in the next one.